and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Did you hear what I said? The Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want of those who fear him. The young lions lie and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Praise be to our God. Amen. At this time, we ask Elder Brooks if he will render a selection, after which we ask Reverend Hill if she will come and read from the gospel according to Matthew 11. And she will also lead us in prayer. Let us proceed in that order. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, y'all make some noise out there. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. May the Lord be good to you. May the Lord lay his ways for you. May the Lord prove it so strong. Oh, come on, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 11, verses 24 
through verse 13. This is the word of the Lord. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for that land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them unto the babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are of heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and you will find rest unto your souls. Let us, let us pray. Let us pray. Let us turn our hearts unto God. Eternal Father, from whom all blessings flow. And it's once again, Lord, that we come before your holy and righteous throne, that we may find your grace and mercy in times like this to help, dear God. Oh, Father God, we thank you for being God all by yourself. Lord Jesus, you know all about us. You made us in your own image. So, Father, we come crying out this evening in no form or fashion, but just crying out unto you, the author and finisher of our, of our faith. Lord, we need a revival. Dear Lord, send a revival. Send a revival and let it begin here at St. John. Let it begin with us, dear God, that we may carry out the good news and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That souls may come running saying, what must I do to be saved? Dear Lord, search your house on this evening. And if you find anything here that's not like you, dear God, we pray that you would pour your blood upon it, that you would change it, that you would fix it, dear God, that you would give those the heart to desire, to yearn, and to cry out for you. Dear Lord, we need a revival in the land. You say it in your word in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and pray. Then would we hear from heaven and you would forgive our sins and you would heal this land. Lord, we need forgiveness of our sins. We need our land healed, dear God. Lord, how long, how long, dear God, will you listen, Lord, to our cry? We need you to li to answer, dear God, for us. We, we, you know, we know you're in charge and you're in control and you know what you're doing, Heavenly Father. But Lord, we're crying out to you in this time of this pandemic, this corona, this COVID-19. We need to hear from you, dear God, that we know that you you're right there anyway, but Lord, we're crying out to you in this prayer. Dear God, we know that you are the great Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You have everything that we need. So Lord, we're just going to turn it over to you. And then, dear God, we pray for the, uh, the Dr. Chapman that will bring the preach word on tonight once again. A man of God. Lord, will you just empower him once again with the right now, right now word, dear God, to beat your people, dear God. We're beating physically. Now, once again, Lord, we need some more spiritual food. So this is our prayer unto you, Heavenly Father. 
We thank you for these and all the blessings that you give unto us. We don't take it like that. We don't take it for granted. But we just say thank you and help us to be more and more of what you have called us to be. Help us to stand in these last and evil days. Fill us now with a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit that we may continue to run on and know that the end you say we win and we will hear you say one day to us, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful of a few things. Now come on and rise on up a little higher and I will make you ruler over man. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us say amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. How many of y'all love the Lord and you won't take it back? Hallelujah. You never sing the name of Jesus because he's been so good to you. He's been a provider. He's been a way maker. He's been a door opener. Amen. So I hope those people want to come on. Make some noise. Make noise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Chapman, a preacher of God, a man of the, of the cloth, a man of God. Now, I have something to read, but Ch uh, Dr. Chapman, he asked me not to read it, but I'm going to do what the deacons asked me to do, what they're accustomed to here at St. John Baptist Church. I'm going to go ahead and do this. And if y'all charge it to my head, not to my heart, if I'm out of order, pray for me. I'm praying for you all. Dr. Reverend Angelo Bertis Chap Chapman is a native of Los Angeles, California. After articulating through the Los Angeles school system, he earned a bachelor's degree in human genetics studies in 19. 1976 from Yankton College in Yankton, South Dakota. He then moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota, where he became a radio personality and producer at the KMOJ Radio, attending the Brown Institute of Radio and Television Broadcasting in 1981. He earned a first-class radio telephone operator's license and diploma in radio and television broadcasting. Dr. Chapman moved to Richmond in 1982. He graduated the School of Theology at Virginia Union University in 1985 with a Master's of Divinity degree. Also in 1985, he was hired as an assistant professor of philosophy and religious studies at the Virginia Union University. He has taught in the religious studies department for 20 years. And he, he has shared, chaired the department for 10 years. Reverend Chapman, Dr earned a Master's of Theology degree from Union Theological Seminary in Richmond, Virginia in 1995. And he has continued studies at the University of Richmond and American University. The former doctor of Antioch Baptist Church in Matthews, Virginia, 1985 through 1996. Dr. Chapman has served as pastor of Pilgrim Journey Baptist Church since 1999. He now serves as director of the university and church relations, as well as university pastor of Virginia, Uni Un Virginia Union University. Reverend Chapman, doctor, and his wife, Sheila, are the proud parents of two children, Nora and Malachi. Dr. Chapman believes that a congregation, Dr. Chapman believes that a congregation should be theologically developed, and he has endeavored 
to do so through his life ministry. God bless each of you. Dr. Chapman will come up after the shamanic, shamanic preparations. Then we will hear ye, Dr. Chapman, bringing the preach anointed word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless each of you. Amen. Okay, well, let's try this again. Make some noise for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. joy comes where? In the morning. One of the things I've learned about the morning, the morning is not necessarily the hour after midnight. Come on, somebody. But morning is when you make it in your mind and say, I believe God. 
And I'm going to praise him like it's already done. People may talk about you, think you're crazy. But you can say that God has a way of making everything all right. Hallelujah. If you have to change the situation, he can change your heart about it. Amen. But we serve a good God. He never leaves us nor forsake us. I wrote this song years ago and there are other versions that was written before, but this is the one the Lord gave me. It simply says that God is going to make everything all right. And I pray and minister to your spirit. Amen.
and faith and when God is going to make things. Even though I don't understand it right now, Lord, I'm going to stretch out a faith and say it's going to be all right. I'll wait until I change God. I'm waiting on the stretches, Lord, to do it your way. God is going to make things all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and all they that dwell therein. So lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle, lift up your heads, O oh, ye gates, and be lifted up the everlasting door. The King of glory shall come in. Who is? Who is? Who is the King of glory? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, He is, He is, He is, He is, He is the King of Glory. God bless you tonight, St. John's. Thank you so much coming out to Pastor Hudson, dear friend of mine. We both have, have traveled here to Virginia from uh, the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. Uh, the same pastor that sent your pastor here to Virginia sent me shortly after. Uh, he sent uh, Pastor Hudson, so I'm always uh, delighted to see him. God bless First Lady Hudson, who's sitting out there, God bless you. Uh, thank you, Reverend Hill, uh, for your participation in worship tonight, for your introduction and prayer. Uh, Reverend Ambassador, uh, good to see you, man. And all the good people uh, who are managing the technology uh, tonight, God bless you. I tell you, they got all kind of toys now. The helicopter cameras. <laughs> I tell you, uh, to our musicians, are like, God bless you, man. man. You did a beautiful job. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much for your ministry of music. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I call your attention to a familiar passage of scripture found in the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Mark beginning at the 35th verse and proceeding through the 41st verse. This is what it says. On the same day, when the evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat against the boat, so that it was already filling with water. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow, and they awoke him, and said to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? 
Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, Who can this be? What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Thus in the reading of the word, Matthew 4, 35 through 41. I want to speak to you this evening on the subject, storms on the journey. Storms on the journey. Let us pray. An almighty and everlasting God, I thank you for what our eyes have seen and for what our ears have already heard. Thank you for St. John's Baptist Church and for the angel and the messenger of this church in the personage of Pastor Hudson. Thank you for the invitation to come again to where I have felt the wonderful hospitality of this pastor and these people. Thank you for them. And thank you, O oh Lord, that they had uh, the technology to be able to be ready for something none of us could have predicted, a pandemic that would keep us from fellowshipping person to person and face to face in our uh, churches. But they had the capacity, O oh Lord, to call folk together in the parking lot. But we can still give glory, honor, and praise unto thy name. And for that, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the forward thinking, the forward thinking, the forward thinking of this congregation and its pastor, the forward thinking. And may they continue to forward think as we move into a, a, a different kind of world, a, a new normal for us. That they will have all that they need to be able to get the word out and to be in communication with the people of this congregation and others who are listening in on this broadcast. Now, Lord, as we are about to embark upon the preached word, I thank you for the privilege of preaching and the opportunity afforded me this evening. Help me, Lord. Help me, 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 help me. Help me, help me, help me, help me to get this word across in a good way. These will wish your word in the name of Jesus. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you and pray. Amen. And amen and amen and amen and amen. Storms. <laughs> Storms on the journey. Church, there will be storms on the journey. There will be storms on the journey. There will be storms on the journey. This is a truth. There will be storms on the journey. Storms are unexpected conditions that avail against you and against your attempts to get somewhere. Storms are resistances against any forward progress you are trying to make. Storms are setbacks after you have set forth. Storms are currents that flow against the path you are on. Storms are winds and rains that blow against your beaten path. There will be 
storms on the journey. And the storms I'm talking about only arise after you have got out there on your journey too far to turn back and not far enough to beat the storm. You will either weather the storm or be capsized by the storm. There will be storms on the journey. I tell you this tonight, not as a warning, because warnings can make you not want to journey. I want you to journey. I tell you this so that you will be conscious of this while you are on your journey, so that you won't be caught off guard psychologically, emotionally, or spiritually when storms arise. You cannot predict when these storms will come, but there are some uh, stabilizing factors that in knowing that they will come, you have a better sense of security knowing that they will. So keep your eyes open on your journey of life because there will be storms on the journey. In the text read unto your hearing, we find the disciples of Jesus in a storm. In the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is holding class down by the sea. A multitude of people have gathered on the beach to hear Jesus talk. And out there, Jesus speaks to them in parables. Parables about the kingdom of God, disguised in tales about how a sower came and sowed some seed and the kind of ground the seed fell upon and what the outcomes were. Jesus spoke of how the kingdom of God was like a mustard seed. When it is planted, it is one of the smallest seeds in the plant community, but when it grows up, it becomes one of the largest herbs. In the same chapter, we find the words made famous in the Billy Holiday song in verse 25. Them that's got shall have them that's not shall lose. So the Bible says, and it still is news. Mama may have, and Papa may have, but God bless the child that's got his own. Jesus is holding a rally out at the seashore in the late afternoon, and a great crowd is there. Now I suppose that it was a nice day there was no atmospheric threats looming. So later that evening, Jesus says to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side. Let's go forward. Let's progress from here to there. Let's go further than we now find ourselves. So they set sail. And when they had sent away the crowd, they got in a ship, and there were little ships that followed them. Church, there will be storms on the journey. This is the truth. There will be storms. There will be storms on the journey. Storms are unexpected conditions that prevail against your attempts to get somewhere. Storms are resistances against any forward progress you're trying to make. Storms are setbacks after you have set forth. Storms are currents that flow against the path you are on. Storms are winds and rains that blow against the direction you're headed in. There will be storms on the journey. And they arise after you have got out there too far to turn around and not far enough to beat it. Nevertheless, the fact that you have knowledge that storms will come, you ought not fear launching out. 
Now it never fails that when you decide to launch out, when you decide to forward yourself, when you move to improve your position, others will follow after. There's some folk can't launch out on their own. There's some folk are not initiators of advancement, not even their own. Some folk need others to create a current for them, and that's okay. But when the storms come, you can't weather the storm for anybody else but yourself. Bible says they set out, go to the other side, and other ships follow them. When they left, it was a good day. When they left, the coast was clear. When they left, the sky was blue. When they left, the wind was calm and the waters were gentle. But a storm was coming on the same day. After a good rally, they set out to go to the other side. And when they got out there, there arose a storm of wind and the waves beat against the boat and the boat was swamped with water. And to make matters worse, it's now evening time. It's getting dark outside and out there on the waters. Have you ever been in a storm at night? Now in the culture, storms have nothing to do with wind and rain. We talk about storms, we talk about something else. But they do involve turbulence. And turbulence translates into trouble. Anybody here tonight know about trouble? That's why the old folks sang that song. Trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes. Trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes. I'm not awake at night. That's all right. I know Jesus will fix it after a while. Now, since storms come on the journey, I have some helpful tips for you for getting through the storm. First of all, keep in mind that journeys, life journeys, are not cruises. Life's journeys are not cruises. Journeys in and of themselves invite peril because some of what a journey is, is uncharted. So when you are journeying, if you see it as a cruise, or that you should be cruising your way through life, you will be too relaxed when the storms arise. And if a storm catches you in relaxed mode, it will knock you completely off balance. And the storm will take the advantage of you. Secondly, don't panic when the storms come. When you panic, you lose control. When you panic, you short circuit your thought processes. When you panic, your emotional balance is disrupted and you lose all composure. And the worst thing you can do is lose composure in a storm. When you panic, you might do anything. So when storms come, don't panic. Thirdly, when a storm arises, you need to remember that you've been through storms before. Somebody on the bloody horn. You have been through storms before. And that you have been through storms before testifies that you have completed the requirements uh, for storm training. In fact, 
You are storm troopers. You can weather storms if you keep moving forward. Remember this as well. Storms don't last. Despite their devastation, despite their damage, storms in nature don't last. And storms in life don't either. You remember Ivan, don't you? How about a Charlene or Wilma or Rita or Katrina or Ike or Sandy or whatever they call them, these storms that we're now seeing? They come and they go. The nature of storms is to start and then they storm themselves out. They don't last. They run aground at some point. All you need to do is prepare for it or get farther back away from it when you know a storm is coming. And the storms in your life won't last either. So don't focus in on how stormy it is in your life. The storm is in your life, but it's not there to stay. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. It's always passing over. Hallelujah. Also, when storms come, remember where you were heading. For that will be incentive and motivation and inspiration because there is an other side waiting for you. Peaceful shores are just up ahead. There is a bright side somewhere. A bright sunshiny day is just around the corner of your tears. Happiness is just around the bend. You can ride it out. You can weather the storm. You can endure it. You can survive it. Remember, you have done it before. Church, there will be storms on the journey. This is the truth. Storms are coming when you set out on your journey. Unexpected conditions will avail against you. Resistances will come against you. Any forward progress you're trying to make, you will have some setbacks. Currents will flow against your path. The winds and the rains of life will blow against you in a tip to capsize you. And though they avail, don't allow them to prevail. The disciples of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus, the disciples, the disciples, the disciples of Jesus, not the followers of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus went out on a cruise. They thought it should have been one. They were out there journeying to the other side when suddenly a storm rose up. A tempest struck suddenly and the waves beat against the ship. It felt like the wind would blow the ship completely over. They were in panic mode in the text. But while they were shaking, Jesus was down in the back part of the ship, sleeping. While they were shaking, Jesus was sleeping. While they were trembling, Jesus was having a dream. While they were in panic mode, Jesus was comforted in his sleep posture. In fact, all accounts of this incident in Matthew's Gospel and Mark's and in Luke's Gospel claim that Jesus was asleep on a pillar in a storm. 
The tempest was raging. And the water was overflowing in the ship. Yes, sir. Jesus was back there. Me, sir. Sleeping on a pillow. Yes, sir. In a storm at night, Jesus is asleep on a pillow. Now, if Jesus is asleep during a storm, the disciples should have laid down right next to Jesus and went to sleep with him. <laughs> well, they didn't do that. They went and woke Jesus up. Get up, Jesus. Carry time now. I can see if Peter's shaking him. Carry time now. Don't be perished. Wake up. Jesus got up, came to the deck, still the storm. I thought, uh, Pastor Hudson, I thought that was very interesting. The first time I thought about it like this, he stilled the storm. He stilled the storm. He didn't stop the storm. He stilled the storm. Peace be still, he said. Church, the storm was still there, but it was still. Now the ship could pass right on through on its journey to the other side because the storm is still. The Lord does not have to alter nature to rescue us. Does not have to change the ecology of creation. He just stilled it until the boat got through. That's what the Lord does in our lives. He stills some things so that we can pass right on through to where the Lord is trying to get you. As soon as you pass by it, it will start up again where it was. But you won't be in it. You'll pass through a stilled storm. St. John, sometimes when the storms come in your life, when the storms of life are raging, and you can't see your way through, wake up Jesus with a prayer. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou would draw thy hand for me, oh, whether shall I go? You better wake up Jesus, and he will steal your storms. Church, there will be storms on the journey. There will be storms on the journey, and they will be just as the old hymn taught us, we are often tossed and driven on the rest of the seas of time. Some are skies and howling tempests off to see the bright sunshine. But in that land, that's the other side, a perfect day when the mist has rolled away, we'll understand it better by and by. And we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land. But he guides us with his eyes and we'll follow till we die. And we'll understand it better by and by church when your storms come. Wake up Jesus. He's a storm stiller, I tell you. He's a rock in a weary land and a shelter in a time of storm. Wake up Jesus in your life before the storms capsize you. Before the storms overwhelm you. Wake up Jesus because in times like these, in times like these, in times like these, in storms like these, you need an anchor. Be sure 
We don't know what the outcome will be, but we know we can pray for one, the one that we wish for. Bless him. Restore him. Keep him alive. He may be able to be father to his children continually. Now, Lord, we also pray for this congregation, for this pastor, for this community. Thank you again for the forward thinking of the people of St. John. May they continue to be progressive and pioneering in how we meet the needs of worship for our people in our community. Lord, Lord, continue to bless this congregation. They will continue to produce persons for ministry and continue to do a great work in ministry in this community. Now, Lord, every car that's here, bless. Every household represented this congregation, bless. Oh, Lord, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Thank you, Lord, for what I'm going to say and what I even heard. In the blessed name of Jesus, we thank you and pray. Amen. I now turn to the Lord. What a powerful word. What a word. What a word. Dr. Chapman has blessed our hearts here tonight. Storms that are in our journey. And as we go to that place that the Lord is leading us to, the message is a message of encouragement that while we journey, let us not grow weary in well-doing, but let us trust in the Lord with all that he gives us with this bit of faith. And I tell you, the Lord will see us through. Have I got one witness? The Lord will see us through. Amen. We thank God this evening for Reverend Hill and her participation in this worship service. <laughs> and leading us to the throne of grace. And we thank God for Elder Andre Brooks. Amen. Amen. This is our first time having Elder Brooks at St. John since I've been here, but he has blessed our hearts tonight. <laughs> a gifted and anointed minister of God. We thank God for you, and we look forward to worshiping with you again. And we thank God for our brotherhood <laughs> or on the job. <laughs> Amen. When God gives us a job, he expects us to be faithful, to be consistent, and to be ready to serve when that time comes. And so we thank God for you, men of St. John. And just keep on serving him. And I come to tell you this evening that God will pour out blessings that you have no idea where they're coming from. But that's our God. And he will, he will provide. We thank God for Dr. Chapman today. Amen. 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 We thank God for the word that he has brought tonight. And we pray, oh God, that as we continue our revival, that you will be in prayer. As we look forward to him coming two more nights this week. And we... Look for a hallelujah good time in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank God for our ministry of technology. And, uh, how they have put things together so that those who are shut in, those who are at home,
those who are even overseas and in distant states can pick us up and be able to participate in this worship time. For God is giving us an opportunity to look up to know where our help comes from. And so in the midst of our storm, God has sent us a revival. And so let us continue to pray for one another. Let us pray for the families of St. John and our kindred, our children and grandchildren, our kindred no matter where they may be. And for every believer in the name of Jesus, for we are the people of God. Second Chronicles says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, God promises that he will heal our land. That's his word. That's what he said. And I come to tell you, God is able to do everything that he has promised. Can you say amen to that? Amen. 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 We serve a good God. And I don't know where I'd be without him. Amen. So as we prepare to leave tonight, we ask that you give as the Lord has blessed you to give. We know that you have given your time. But the scripture talks about tithes and offerings. And when we can be obedient to the Lord and just do as he has asked us, blessings will come down. Those windows of heaven will open up and God will pour into our lives that which we did not expect. Let us pray. Father God, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, Lord, for this preaching. We thank you for the message that he has brought to us tonight, that our hearts may be strengthened, that we may be encouraged, that in the midst of the storm, as the wind blows, and as the waves beat in on us, Lord, you've got our back. And Lord, you're able to steal the storm. You're able to make a pathway that, Lord, we can continue this journey having the joy of the Lord in our hearts and knowing that there is no fear when we trust in the Lord. So we thank you tonight. And Lord, we pray that you just continue to let your shield of protection be around us as we go and as we serve and as we minister to those, Lord, who are shut in and shut out. We pray, O oh God, that you strengthen our hands and order our steps. And now, by the grace and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ, may it rest, rule, and abide with each and every one now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let all the people of God say, Amen. Amen.